Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Teams this Sunday morning. If you have just woken up, uh, then you better go get your coffee and be quick because we're about to start an awesome time with uh, Leighton. So Leighton is our guest speaker for this morning and Leighton is really epic. Um, so just before we get to Leighton, because he's really an epic guy, you've got to find out about this guy. Before we get to him, let me introduce myself because some of you don't know me. Um, my name is Gareth. I, um, I am one of the youth pastors at Christchurch Midrand. And uh, that's all you really need to know about me, actually. Let's skip over to Leighton. So <laughs> Leighton, tell us who you are. Tell us about yourself. We want to know you. Hey, Gareth, thanks so much for, for having me. Um, and thank you for that very, very kind introduction about being epic. I'm not too sure about that, but um, I'll, I'll take any compliment that I get these days. Uh, so, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, guys, it's good to be with you uh, today. Uh, my name is Leighton, as Gareth said. Um, I'm a Gareth's equivalent, uh, a youth pastor down in Cape Town at a church called uh, St. James. Um, in fact, your, one of your other youth pastors, Black, spoke at one of our youth camps not too long ago. So there is a, a little bit of a connection. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so I do the youth ministry at St. James. Um, I'm married to Kirsty. Uh, we've got three daughters. Uh, Sadie Mia is uh, 10 years old. Inez is eight. And our little one, Mila, will be five uh, this year. Uh, besides Kirsty and the girls, we also have a dog named Goku. Uh, so for any Dragon Ball Z fans out there, um, that's our, our dog, and he, he's 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 crazy. Uh, I think he he thinks he's Super Saiyan all the time. So he, he keeps me around for the money. Uh, but yeah, so so Maddie and three girls. We we have a we have a dog um, named Goku. Uh, we got a goldfish named Goldie. Uh, and just to complement the three G's, Gareth, I think you'll like to see that your name starts with a with a G as well. Yeah. We got a hamster. We got a hamster named Gizmo. So Gizmo, Goku, <laughs> and Goldie are three pets. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, besides uh, loving doing youth ministry and and spending time with with teens down here in Cape Town, um, I'm an avid um, endurance junkie. I like anything long distance. So. Um, Long distance road running is, is mostly the, the thing I like most. Um, I was meant to do my first Comrades Marathon this year, but obviously COVID canceled those plans. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, that's me. I don't know if you want to know anything else. No, but I've got to, I've got to share something with the team because one of my favorite memories of you is, um, is I once came with you guys on one of your St. James youth camps. Uh, this was before you were the youth pastor when, when Scott was still doing it. And I'll never forget being on the bus. And um, guys, Leighton, Leighton was getting bored on the bus. And so he decided that everybody else must be bored as well. So he got a game of nerd for nerd going in the bus. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. I, I've I'm, never... I'm... Yeah, I do. Okay. It's coming back to me now. I totally forgot about that. To bring back <laughs> some good memories there. <laughs> I can't believe you actually got a whole bunch of teenagers to not only sing, but guest songs in Afrikaans on a bus. That is amazing. <laughs> well done for that. The, the weird thing is, I don't know why I came up with that idea, because my Afrikaans absolutely sucks. Uh, I can understand Afrikaans, <laughs> but don't ask me to speak Afrikaans. So it must, have been, it must have been the Holy Spirit inspiring me in that moment, but uh, I don't know what was, was going on. But yeah, thanks yeah, for that reminder, Gary. That's a good inspiration. <laughs> Um, so now here's a very important question to ask the Leighton is how do you feel about Liverpool winning the Premier League? <laughs> Yo, listen important. Gareth, um, I know you were up late last night doing some work for, for your church. I was up late last night trying to uh, calm all my Liverpool friends down, uh, especially, <laughs> uh, especially, especially one of my good buddies and you know him as well, Kim Quickfall. Um, oh no, uh, yes. no. Listen, I'm a I'm a big United fan. So last night was 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 hard, and I actually had to switch my data off because I was getting way too many WhatsApp messages from my Liverpool <laughs> friend. Um, but hey, listen, as much as I'm a United fan and I don't like to see Liverpool back on their perch, um, look, you got to give credit where credit is due. Um, they, they had a phenomenal season, 
but you know, as I said to Kim, uh, we still United still has twenty league titles, and you only have nineteen. So, <laughs> you know, um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that for now and, and hold on to that. Hope look, they might overtake us next year, but for now we're still in the lead. So, but hey, exactly. if you're a Liverpool fan, congrats to you guys. You deserve it. Well done. Um, see you next season. Yeah, well, I I I think the the um the worst. The worst comment that I that I saw it probably came out before the um, before the uh, Premier League title was won by Liverpool. But there was a, a post that was going around on WhatsApp that said um, something to do with that if you if you don't if you're embarrassed about wearing a mask in public, don't worry. Many people wear Man United T-shirts. <laughs> so, yeah, listen. <laughs> I know I'm gonna I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to cop it for for many many more months to come. Um, you know, there's a saying amongst our friends, if you give it, you've got to take it. So I've been giving it for years, so it's my chance to, to take some of the banter. Uh, but uh, that's, that's why we love sport, eh? Um, it's only yeah. one team winning it every year. It gets a bit boring, so at least now it creates a bit of spice. And it's also, it's also testing the level of friendships, because friendships <laughs> can be broken over this. Um, it's so true. So, it's so true. So, yeah. <laughs> So, Leighton, I think because of time, I'm going to skip the one question I was going to ask you. But um, so my, my, my last question to ask is, um, so getting a bit more serious, what, what made you uh, decide to become a Christian? Yeah, Gareth, I mean, that's a, a great question and a question I actually love answering. Um, just a, a, as briefly as I can, you know, I grew up in a home where, you know, well, really, my mom used to take us to church. My dad wasn't really interested in, in Christian things. Um, I mean, he was a Christian by default because he wasn't Muslim or Jewish or Buddhist. Yeah. Um, so from, from a young boy, I remember going to church with my mom, but it was really just picking the boxes, you know, we got to go to church and then come home. My dad was a chef, so we'd always come home to a, a lovely cooked lunch, Sunday lunch. So that's my memory of a Sunday, going to church, not really liking it. Um, but then coming home and there's roast potatoes and chicken and everything. To eat. So, um, but anyway, uh, my parents got divorced when I was quite young. And my best friend, um, still today, um, his parents invited my mom and myself and my sister in, during that time of divorce to come to St. James. Um, and I think that I went on a youth camp uh, when I was in uh, grade, well, I was standard three, what's that, grade five, I think. Yeah, hmm. just, I'm giving away my age there. It was still standards <laughs> in those days. Um, but in grade five, I went on a youth camp. And that was when, for the first time, I actually really heard what the gospel is. What, what it means to firstly know who Jesus is, know what he's done for me. And for the first time, I heard that I actually need to, to respond to this message. Um, I, I can't leave that camp just being neutral. I'm either going to accept it or not. And it was during free time with one of my leaders. We were sitting and he was just explaining some of the stuff we, we heard. And I was a young boy at this, age, at this time. And he said something to me, Garrett, that, that stuck with me. And it actually scared me at the time. But I think that's how the Lord started doing the work in my life. Um, as he was explaining the gospel, he said to me, Let's, without Jesus, heaven is never possible. Um, and as a little boy, I remember hearing that thinking, I don't, I don't want to go to hell. I definitely want to go to heaven. Um, and, and it was at that point where, where I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But I think from that point on, it was a long process of the Lord helping me to understand that decision more, to understand the, the wonder of what Jesus has done for me. Um, and in fact, in the, in the talk that I do for you guys a bit later, I speak about one of those wonders in a bit more detail, you know, forgiveness. Um, and, and what that meant for me as a man uh, to be forgiven, um, knowing my sins, knowing my struggles, hmm. that's really what made me reach out and grab Jesus because I wasn't being offered forgiveness anywhere else. Um, hmm. and, and that really stuck with me and, and made me go, wow, here's the God of the universe wanting to forgive me. Um, and, and as I grew and understood that more, it just blew my mind, even to this day, you know, it's, such an amazing thing that I've been forgiven by the God of this universe, even though I don't deserve it. So, so that's kind of a little bit of my story. Um, obviously, I know we don't have a lot of time, but if you guys ever want to get my number from Gareth or chat a bit more, I'd love to share more of it. 
But that's why I love Jesus, because I've been forgiven, knowing I don't deserve it. Nathan, thank you so much for that, and I really appreciate that. Um, and I think there's a lot of people who have a similar kind of, who might be in a similar place where, where you were. Uh, so if you are one of those people, then uh, I suggest you stay listening to the talk that Leighton's going to give and, and consider uh, Christ for yourself. Um, so Leighton's uh, going to speak now, but just before he speaks, I just want to mention uh, one or two news items for everybody. Um, so the first one is uh, that next Friday, it's the third, on the third of July, the third of July, yes, the third of July we are having something called a, a horrible movie night 2.0 okay so for those who came to our first horrible movie night it was the biggest jam ever we were all together on zoom we watched the movie and we just talk rubbish the entire movie through and we make sure that we choose the worst movie and now what i have done is i have literally searched the internet for the worst film i have looked, looked at every every crit article and i have found what the world claims is the worst movie ever okay so <laughs> so join us on zoom go to our illumination page to find the details for that and then next week guys many of you guys remember jabu one of the guys who spoke at crossroad camp uh, at the end of last year he's amazing i don't even need to say much about him but he's going to be speaking next sunday for team so it's a great opportunity to once again Try and invite friends to, to the chat, send a link to them for our, our illumination stuff. Start a Facebook, um, you can start a Facebook watch party. If you go to our outreach page on our website, you can see I've done a video there on how to do a Facebook watch party. Go and do that, organize your friends. It's gonna be really awesome. Without further ado, I'm gonna leave it over to Leighton to do the preaching. Thanks everybody. Now, Black spoke at one of our youth camps here in Cape Town a couple of years ago. Um, and I said to him when I dropped him at the airport that I would love to come and speak one day at your guys' youth group. Um, and while I'm not physically in Midland with you today, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be able uh, to speak to you guys. I really do consider it a joy and privilege to be able to share God's word with you today. Now, if you have a Bible, then turn to Psalm 130. Perhaps you want to push pause on this video now and go and grab a Bible if you have one, and then open up to Psalm 130. It's only a very short psalm, so I'm going to read all eight verses. So won't you follow with me as I read now Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Now please keep that open uh, in front of you. I'm going to say a short prayer fast, and then we'll get into our talk today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to spend some time in your word now. As we do that, please help us to, to get rid of any distraction so that we can focus clearly on what you have to say to us. May your word today, Lord, penetrate our hearts, bring pleasure to our souls, and give purpose to our lives. Amen. Now, I want you to imagine something with me. Imagine you are at your desk, your computer is open, and in front of you on your screen is a blank word document. Now, here is your imaginary assignment. I want you on that Word document to write down every sin that you have committed in your life. So if you're 14 years old, you need to write down every sin for 14 years. If you're 18 years old, well, you got a little bit more to write because you got four more years. I want you to write down everything that you've done wrong, 
that you thought that was wrong, that you said that was wrong, write down the things that you should have done but you left undone, everything. How many pages do you think your Word document will be? My guess is most probably quite a lot. You might even need to clear some space on your computer just to save that Word document. I know my Word document will certainly be huge because I have 38 years of sin to write it down. But I'm not finished. I want you to imagine that you've done that exercise, you've gone to bed, only to wake up the next morning and discover that your computer has been hacked. And that Word document of yours, which you thought was private, has now been shared to all your family, all your friends, to your school teachers at school, to your teammates on your sports team. It's gone live on all your social media platforms, and it even made the evening news. How would that make you feel? If it was me, <laughs> I'll be looking for the biggest hole that I can find so I can jump in and just hide away for a very, very long time. But I'm still not done. Imagine, not only did that Word document spread everywhere that I just mentioned a few minutes ago, but that that Word document of all your sins lands up in the hands of God. Now maybe you're listening to this talk and you don't believe in God. And at this point you're going, well actually I don't care if it lands up in the hands of God because hey, God's not even real. If that's you, I want you for this talk just to imagine for a second or think for a second what happens if God is real. There is a thing like a holy God who hates sin. Just imagine that's true if that's you. And your word document lands up in his hands. God opens it and he starts reading. And not only does he read your list of sins that you've committed over all those years, as he's reading, he's adding to that list for all the sins that you actually forgot about. How would that make you feel? Well, again, if it was me, I'd be extremely petrified. See, I think if we are honest with ourselves, my guess is that we will quickly realize that the psalmist's conclusion in verse 3 is absolutely spot on. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? You see, the psalmist knew that if God was making a word document of his sin, there was no way that he was going to be able to stand before this holy God who hates sin. The psalmist knew that there was going to be no way that he could ever justify or excuse his sin or say, but I didn't know. He really, honestly, had no leg to stand on. The psalmist knew the Bible truth that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He knew that our sins keep us away from God. And no matter how hard we try to delete some of those sins so that our word document can maybe be kept to just one page. The truth is, even if you could do that, for every sin that you do take off, you must probably add in ten more on. See, the psalmist knows that based on his sin, there is no way that he can stand before a holy and righteous God. That is why in verse 2, we see the psalmist starting with God, not with himself. Listen to verse 2. Let your ears, that's God's ears, be attentive to my cry for mercy. You see, the psalmist realized that as he's on his way to worship God, now just a quick side note here, you would have noticed above verse 1 in your Bible it says songs of ascents. 
These are songs that Old Testament believers would sing on their way to worship God in Jerusalem. And these songs are, are Psalm 120 all the way to 134. So just in case you're wondering what that is, well, there's your fun fact for the day. You see, the psalmist realized as he was on his way to worship God, that he can only ever enter into the presence of God based on God's mercy towards him and not on his ability to keep his word document of sin down to just a single page. So he cries out to God for mercy because the psalmist understands that that is the only way that he can stand before God if God is merciful toward him. Let me ask you, what do you think allows you to stand before a holy God? Do you think because you are not a racist or that if you're a guy you don't hurt women? Maybe you think it's because you have a loving personality and everyone just gets on well with you. Or maybe you think because you come from a wealthy and very uh, sort of model family that that makes you stand before God. Maybe you think it's your good grades or your popularity. And you think that being all those things and having all those things, somehow God will allow you to stand before Him because He will actually be quite impressed by you. Dear friends, as good as those things are, None of those things allows us to stand before God because all of those things, in fact, our hearts and our lives have been tainted by sin. The only way we can stand before a holy God is because He is merciful. The psalmist knew that. We, today, need to know that too. Now look at verse 4. But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are feared. What a great verse. With you there is forgiveness. The psalmist knows that despite his sin, in God's mercy towards him, that's the only thing that, that, that he has going for him, it's God's mercy toward him. That is how he can stand. And because of that, he can be forgiven. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Despite the psalmist's sin, he can draw near to this holy God based on God's mercy towards him. And then he gets to experience forgiveness. No matter what he has done, no matter how big his word document is. But there's something even more amazing. The God of the psalmist is the same God who offers me, sinful Latin, and you forgiveness today. It's the same God who offers us forgiveness through his son Jesus, despite our word document being filled with pages and pages and pages of sin. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, a book in the New Testament, the writer writes this, In Him, that's in Jesus, we have redemption through His blood. Here it is, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us. Jesus' death on the cross was to forgive your sin despite your word document. Isn't that amazing? In fact, it was for your word document that Jesus was willing to die for you so that you can experience forgiveness and stand before the God of this universe absolutely forgiven. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I am so grateful to God for His mercy towards me 
so that I can have forgiveness. Because boy, I need forgiveness of my sins. Remember, 38 years and counting. So grateful to God for His mercy towards me and His forgiveness. Now, if I was the psalmist, the next line I would have written would have been something like, Sure, what a relief. Thank goodness for that mercy because now I'm sorted for the future. Now, it is a relief and God's forgiveness does sort us out for the future. But did you notice the second half of verse 4? But with you there is forgiveness, there it is. And then he says this, Therefore you are feared. You see, guys, God's forgiveness affected how the psalmist lived in the present in that he feared God. That's language for he gave God the proper worship that he deserves. He gave God the number one spot in his life. Not only when he was on his way to worship God in the temple, but for his everyday living. You see, the psalmist allowed God's forgiveness not just to give him comfort for the future, but it shaped the way he lived in the present. It changed the way he lived there and then. And it's the same for us in that Jesus' death on the cross and the forgiveness that brings must change how we live every day. We must fear Jesus now that we are forgiven by him. That is, we must give Jesus the number one spot in our life. And when we do that, it will change how we live. Now you might ask, let's, as I think about this, and, and if I embrace Jesus' forgiveness, how on earth is that going to change the way I live now? Well, here's a couple of ways how God's forgiveness through Jesus does change how we live now. Firstly, it will change the way you live because Jesus' forgiveness for you will be a massive source of encouragement for you on a daily basis. I don't know what serves as an encouragement for you. But if you are not encouraged by the truth that God has forgiven you for all your sin on that Word document that you typed up at the start of the talk, I'm not sure whatever will. Knowing that you are forgiven despite what you did yesterday, in fact, despite what you maybe did an hour ago, what an encouragement. God has forgiven you. There is one way to change how you live now. You will be filled with encouragement. Another way that it will help you live well now is that God's forgiveness to us through Jesus should make us as Christians the most grateful people in the world. No matter what is going on in your life. Life is hard. And sometimes life can really throw lemons at us, right? It's just, it's tricky, it's hard, it's frustrating. But here's the truth about God's forgiveness for you. No matter what you gain through, you can wake up every morning knowing your sins are forgiven by the God of this universe. Even when life is not perhaps going like you thought it would. Every day you have something to be grateful for because every day you wake up with the knowledge that God has forgiven your sin. Another way that God's forgiveness for us through Jesus should spur us on to live differently now is that that forgiveness should help us see sin for what it is. If Jesus died for those sins on your word document, you don't want to go back there. You want to live a different life. It's like a prisoner coming out of jail. He's free now and, he, and as he comes out of jail, he gets a, a new pair of Levi jeans, um, a Reebok hoodie, a pair of Air Jordans, uh, a pair of funky socks, uh, maybe some Ray-Ban shades, and, and he's set to go. But then the prisoner goes, you know what, I'm free, but it's cool. Leave the, leave the cool clothes, I'm just going to rock my orange jumpsuit. That's absurd, right? You don't do that. 
You, you want to take those things off that remind you of prison and put on the new for your new way forward. Well, that's how it is with Jesus' forgiveness. We allow His forgiveness to secure our future, absolutely. But that forgiveness for all those sins should drive us to go, well, we don't want to live in that sin anymore that Jesus died for. Rather, we want to put on new language and new ways of living that's going to please our Lord Jesus. Do you see how His forgiveness radically changes the way we live here and now? See, God's forgiveness is the thing that will actually drive our racism in our world. God's forgiveness is what will stop gender-based violence. God's forgiveness will stop corruption because God's forgiveness through Jesus is the only thing that changes our hearts. See, God's forgiveness is not only a, whew, I'm safe for the future. It also leads to change living here and now. And that's because His forgiveness is immensely practical and it's not just a theory. Now this psalm has been a massive encouragement to me because knowing the size of my word document, God in His mercy chose to, for, to forgive me. And His forgiveness has allowed Leighton in all his, his struggles and sin to live a different life now. What a truth. What a great God. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. Do you know this forgiveness, dear friend? Well, if not, you can. Now is the time to know this forgiveness. Listen, I know sometimes you feel like maybe you, you're too far gone for God. Maybe you feel like because you're making the same mistake over and over and over again, God will never forgive you, God will never accept you, God will never love you. While you need to know that God, this God, the God of the psalmist, the God of the Bible, who is rich in mercy, can make you alive in Christ. Now is the time. I want to encourage you to chat to Black or to Gareth. Or you can even chat to me, get my number from them. And if you're comfortable with that, I would love to chat to you to, to explain more about how you can experience Jesus' forgiveness in the year and now. And you're not too far gone for Him. No ways. He loves you and He will forgive you if you come to Him. And if you think, well, now nah, let's listen, Blue, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I got a lot going for me and I'm sure at the end of the day God's going to see all my achievements and, and see the things I've done and go, no, no, this guy's okay or this girl's okay. You too need to remember that God who is rich in mercy can make you alive in Christ. It's His mercy through Jesus that makes you alive, not you. So don't be overconfident that you can stand before God based on your own achievements. Now to end, I want to read the words of a song that we sing often at our youth group and in our church, and I'm sure you guys sing it at Christ Church Midrand as well, which really encapsulates God's forgiveness so well. The song is called At the Cross, and I end with these words. There is a place where sin and shame are powerless, where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness, where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I owe all to you. Where my love ran red and my sin washed white, I'm in awe of you. Here my hope is found, here on holy ground, here I bow down. Lord, may we this week be in awe of your mercy and forgiveness toward us. And may that drive us to bow down and worship you every day. Amen.